Welcome to Beyond the Frontline Podcast, where your hosts, U.S. Air Force veterans, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson, will help you transition from the front line to the home front. Listen every other Wednesday as they will bring great conversations, resources, tips, and feel good stories that will resonate and relate. Now, here's your hosts, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson. Well, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Beyond the Front Line. My name is Jay Johnson. I'm one of your co-hosts, and I'm joined by my partner in crime. In crime. Yeah, you westerly have it. I don't know. My partner in crime, the queen. I think I tried to say queen too quickly. <laughs> the queen of Beyond the Front Line, Miss Donna Hoffmeyer. Donna, what's going on, my friend? Ooh, guess what today is? First day of school First for you. Day of I knew it. I could see it exuding <laughs> from you. I we drop them off with big smiles. I've got one that's a freshman in high school and one that is a sixth grader. And we sent them off with a big smile. And then mom and dad went to the gym and then we went and had breakfast. That's fantastic. Even you before, get, yeah. Yeah, you and Brian get a little time to yourselves again. And right? we were so, so kind that we took a picture of us and we sent it to Brady. Oh, that's kind. I'm sure he <laughs> I'm sure he appreciates it. I'm just glad I don't have to mess around with the school traffic anymore and all the chaos that goes I know that. you say the that. drama's still in my life, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think that goes away when you have girls. No. I'm I'm pretty sure to all parents that have girls. Yeah. Um, you have all I have a girl and she's a force. And so I was at breakfast this morning and this just happened there's no joke and i look over and we're sitting outside eating and there is a family with three little girls under the age of five. Oh my and I, all i can think of is like god bless your heart right and then i was like you know my daughter just cleaned out her closet and she wanted to get rid of this great big american doll ice cream truck that will target knockoff <laughs> ice cream truck right and so I asked the mom when the little girls were not nearby and I said, you know, this is what we're doing. And she goes, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, can I give it to you? <laughs> I brought it back so to her. So they inherited an ice cream. Yeah, truck. she happened to work there. She was actually oh, working good. at the restaurant. And I said, I will come right back and I will bring it. And, <laughs> and I said, and you know, bless your heart. You have three little girls and embrace it because when they start hitting 10. <laughs> that wasn't her tip for the oh she was there just enjoying it no, no, she, she wasn't was, working she was she working. working that was her tip that was her, gave tip. her an ice cream advice truck. an ice cream truck that's yeah. what it was so so i say all that and and i'm turning gray as we speak every well, time and well, and i'm gonna well what's going on with you and well no, no i was just gonna say that gray welcome to life right i mean mine's hidden under a hat as we speak well right you now, have so. a girl too yeah no i do yesterday i did training for two air force air national guard units and a gentleman in the room came up to me at the end because i told stories yeah. you know about my daughter and some things we are currently going through in her teenage years and he said i just want you to know i've got a 23 year old daughter and it doesn't stop and i'm like fantastic oh, so. God, that does not... <laughs> well i'm gonna say that our guest that's coming in today she yeah. has two little girls they're not little anymore they're 17 and 14 oh good but she also has girls so she probably has plenty of advice uh, i'm sure there's <laughs> others that may have to be an entirely different episode <laughs> for veterans be. that need advice on how to raise yeah. girls. Yeah. God bless it. No, it's good. Look, I, I was thinking right before we started too, what we've been experiencing here in the San Antonio area. And I was channeling my inner Mr. T Mr. from T. the Rocky days. Yeah. You know, when they asked him, what's your prediction for the fight? And he looked at the camera and he said, pain. <laughs> My 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 prediction is rain. We're gonna finally get rain to San rain. Antonio. There you go. Well, you did. It's been skipping me like you didn't get it. No, the whole sky opens up. It's sunny here, and it's raining over on your house. It's oh, frustrating. You're only five miles from me. I know it's ridiculous. Wow. I've done something wrong. Well, we got rain, <laughs> and the kids went to school in rain, and I thought that was very awesome. And yeah. So, all right. I guess they're ready. They're ready to hear who we've got on board. You're ready to to do an introduction? I'm yeah. excited. I'm looking forward so, to this. So, Karen Soroka mm -hmm. is somebody that I have known for, holy moly, I'm afraid to say that. So, I left Ramstein in 2002. So, I've known her for over 20 years. I didn't think that was possible, but I have. Karen was a medic when I was a flight nurse, Very and cool. that's where we met. So, she left the military, uh, separated, and decided to kind of go do her own thing and and stayed home with our kids after the Air Force and decided to, to do all that good stuff. 
She went to school and she went to Allen Hancock and Excelsior College while she was raising her two little girls that are not so little anymore. <laughs> and while she was doing all that and did her school, she actually started the beginning of what is now my scratch off. Oh, that's her, the business name. This is the business name, right? She loved graphic designs and she started to play around with this and developed this company called My Scratch Offs. And it started in 2008, and it brings the consumer market to the little known scratch off products. So everybody knows like lotto tickets, right? You, know, yeah. you scratch them yeah. off. Well, she does a version of scratch offs for all kinds of things, like for teachers and companies and like they're fun ones and just so you win good. something. I don't know. Well, you could set it up that way. I guess we're gonna right? hear. We're gonna hear. We right. She'll tell us about that. But it, all kinds of stuff. And I've watched her over the years, and I've actually even seen her company because we went out and visited at a retirement, and we got to go to her business and check it out. And since then, she has moved up to another building. So she's nice. moving outward and upward and expanding That's so beautiful. in 14 years she has built a physical and online presence and it's rivaled by few which i would agree and she grew her business from her home in the first four years and then she moved into commercial space and like i said she moved into a second commercial space Love it. she does this in belleville illinois and her daughters are beautiful madison and molly and she has a dog bella and she's very busy because I see her all over Facebook. If she's not at home with her kids, she's off doing some kind of social things or traveling. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. She's a leap year baby. Oh. And so she goes on these leap year cruises, which are pretty awesome too. And I'll see her on Facebook. And I'm like, tell my husband, like, Karen's on a leap year cruise like that. <laughs> so, so with no further ado, I do want to welcome Karen Soroka. It's so awesome to have you here, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Donna. I appreciate you thinking of uh, me when you were trying to, to, you know, come up with, with guests for this podcast. Yeah, it, this was, like I said, this is our startup entre entrepreneur kind of series, really doing like little mini series. And one of the first things we thought of was like, I'm like, ooh, franchises, that's a big one. But then I'm like, where's the organic? And, and started from the ground up and does something that nobody else has really done. And then I'm like, Dude, I see you every day. Yeah, this is fantastic because we talk and share ideas for veterans. And we're like, look, find something you want to do. And if it doesn't exist, create it. So, right. I mm -hmm. mean, this is very unique. So that brings us to the whole creation part, Karen. So so you got out. And then I'm actually just going to kind of let you go from there. Like, I want to know what was going on in your mind that kind of led you on this journey. Okay, so Donna, I separated in 2001. And once I separated in 2001, I had just met who is my husband at the time and separated, came back to the US, went back to Germany. We got married shortly thereafter. He was military as well. Our assignment took us to California, Vandenberg Air Force Base. And while I was there is when I was doing wedding favors and stuff on eBay. Because I'm, you know, the girl I had just gotten married had started to have the kids and needed to bring in some money to the household. You know, most of us, especially those of, those of us in the military, we've worked our entire lives. Yes, I wanted to be home with my kids. I wanted to solidify that relationship, but I wanted to, to do something else. So started out learning the whole graphic design, learning all of the Adobe Suite stuff, and was successful with things on eBay. And I came across that the scratch-off existed in a sticker form, which I was like, hmm, like this is interesting. This, like, you can do all kinds of things with that, with this. So started thinking, how can you incorporate that into the wedding industry, which is, you know, what I was doing. And... As I'm starting to do research, it was very apparent that, first of all, nobody was doing this in the consumer market, like nobody at all. Second of all, it was only available, you know, for me to purchase that scratch off in a sticker form in very large quantities. Hmm. So with this, I'm like... Okay, this goes into another point of the whole funding portion of things. My husband and I talked things through and I was like, I really want to test market this. You know, intuition kicks in for some of us mm -hmm. and that's what really got me going. Did some market research, 
figured out what I had to invest into, into the product to be able to break it down and get it to an affordable, you know, quantity for the average consumer, moms, brides, you know, teachers, whatever the case is, whatever, whatever you want to use that for. And so, you know, 5,000 self-investment, you know, type of a thing. Let's see where this goes. And we kept making, you know, progress. We started off on eBay, of course. We created our own website. At this point in time, 14 years later, I think we've had like eight, you know, renovations to our website or remodels to our, and then expanded to Etsy. And then from Etsy, Amazon, Amazon's a beast. Amazon's crazy. And then just within the past year or two, we've expanded onto Walmart. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. In so, stores or online? I'm sorry? In stores or online for Walmart? Only online. Yeah. But we are both in the Walmart fulfillment services and the Amazon of uh, the FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon side of things. Meaning that we send our products pre-packaged to Amazon and to Walmart, and they sell them on our behalf. So do they buy them from you at cost and then sell them at their own price or? It's not in a vendor relationship. It's in a consignment relationship. So we have our products there. They sell on our behalf, all the money, of course, they do all of that. And then they pay us out for what we do sell. And it's like a split, like take some off the top and then give you the rest kind of thing. Yep. Absolutely. That's nice. Yeah. And just over the years, it was over the years, it was just a intuition just kept me, you know, kept telling me, okay, you need to try this. Okay. We need to do this. Okay. We need to do this. Cause as I said, we started with only the retail of the scratch off stickers themselves with a DIY mentality. You can do this. This is what, this is what, this is all you need. It's just a, you know, a peel and stick sticker. So once I realized that the sticker side of things was definitely viable, I'm like, I already have some graphic design experience. I need more. I need, I need to figure out a couple things. Why don't I, why don't I figure out some printing capabilities of what I can do in order to expand what I can offer to my clients? Now, another thing to note is because we launched as only offering the stickers, However, in the printing industry, those stickers are called labels. And that's where I was trying to figure out my target market. Am I trying to do more consumers? Am I trying to do more businesses? So, and from the very beginning, I did find out that it was really, it was pretty an equal split. And the brand name at that point in time was my scratch off labels. Because as I said, we were only retailing the the stickers at that point in time. So... We did rebrand in 2014 because I found that I was trying to shift. I wanted to get to the point where we were offering a completed project to the customer. They can tell us the size of the card. They can design it themselves if they want, but I have a graphic designer on staff that will do 100% of it for you. You approve everything. We send it to print. Once we get it back from print, we have machinery that actually puts the scratch off on the cards for them. Now, mind you, I preface that this is for like businesses, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, your main streets, your theaters, whatever it is. And it's, it's based, it's, it's more for use as promotional as Kohl's, you know, sends out their promotional coupons every month or whatever with the 10% off, 20% off. That's what this is in a business promotional aspect of things. So as we realized that that absolutely was a a growth for the business as well, bringing the businesses into it, we also started to try to brainstorm what other kinds of projects or what other kinds of products can we bring to the market for other people. So as we started launching wedding favor, not wedding favor, wedding, oh yes, wedding favor, scratch off cards. Right. Bridal favor, a bridal shower, game cards, and those types of things. We kind of expanded a little bit into the DIY side of it as well, where it's just a plain card that has a design on it. It has a blank white area in there for the customer to write in whatever they want. And that's where we get into the consumer side of things with Amazon, with Walmart, with Etsy, with the own web, with our own website and everything. 
Holidays from here on out from the rest of the year are a huge boon for business for us because we have Halloween products and we have game cards and we have DIY cards. And then same thing for Thanksgiving, same things for Christmas. We've found through some of the some of the information that we get back from Amazon on our products because they give us analytics on some of the ads and things that we run. We've found that it's definitely teachers who are looking for the products to, you know, in their classrooms. And believe me, being in this industry for 14 years, I know that there's a decline in print. You know, there's a decline in print when it comes to large businesses. It just, it is how it is. However, teachers and people, when you're going to, you're having events, things like that, tactile, things that they can feel, things that they can interact, things that they can still do, people still want. So that's how we've just continued to try to expand our, our lines based on what the consumer needs. And I'm sure you guys are going to hear a ton of stories from other veteran entrepreneurs who are talking about COVID and how, what was the effect of COVID on your business and significant in that I'm not only geared towards businesses. I'm not only geared towards consumers. I have a pretty good mix and it, it shuffles throughout the year. Sometimes it's 45, 55, sometimes it's opposite 55, 45. So, but I also had a business coach in my, my history. I think I hired him at about year 10 and he was trying to push me to focus more and solely on the business side of things. And I'm really, really, really glad. I'm sorry. B2B kind of things, not B2C. That's what you're talking about. He's trying to get you to go business to business. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He wanted me to focus more on that because he's like, well, that's, where your fast money is. He's like, that's where you'll make more money quicker. And I will tell you, intuition to me was like, no, I don't, I really, really don't want to do that. And now post COVID, thank God I didn't do that because we lost all of our business business during COVID. So we were surviving off of the business to consumer, you know, business that we had had during that time. Wow. Wow. Do you, well, there was a question that just popped in my head and it just popped out of my head. God dang it. You know when that happens. When, what did you find? So when COVID hit, did you see an uptick on the consumer side versus the business side? Or you just saw some consistency with the consumer side? I was just thinking people are trying to find fun things to do, you know, I don't know. Well, I didn't see an uptick. We absolutely saw a downtick in everything. But it wasn't just me. That was pretty much across the board for the first, you know, two to six months. Yeah. We are now back to pre-pandemic levels, but we're, and we found that we needed to try to pivot a little bit into not only U.S. markets, but trying to go after other markets. And our other, our other primary market outside of the U.S. is Canada. Right. So we're in the process right now of trying to focus on that and I work a lot with the state of Illinois. The SIUE here has an SBD, SBDC, a small business development center, if anyone else needs that. I use the SBDC a lot. They also have an international trade center here that's tied to the SBDC. And I have a representative. She's amazing. And she's helped me with doing website localization, making sure that the website is translated into French. I also have it in, in Spanish as well. But taking advantage of those resources, like there's all kinds of resources out there for small businesses. I do have a leg up also in the industry. Well, not in the, I do have a leg up because I am a, a veteran owned business and I'm certified with that. And I'm a women owned small business as well. And I've done that through the, the WBE, WBENC. Yep. yep. So I do suggest if you qualify for those, make sure that you do it. Yeah, I just did the veteran own one not yeah. long ago. I still have to do the women's side of it, but yeah. Karen, I'm curious. So a couple different things, really. One, I understand, I think, the business kind of model. I heard you say, you know, you referenced just as an example, a retail store that may in a monthly promotional use these scratch-offs for them to award their 
you know, percentages off of something they're doing in the store, right? I would love to hear from you an example, though, maybe what teachers are coming to you for, if you have one available or just off the top of your head to say, hey, here's what, you know, that might look like. That's one question. And and I know I'm going very product specific, but I think this is such a unique mm-hmm. niche. I'm geeking out a little bit on the, the thought of that. And then I think, you know, the second thing I'd like to know, are there minimum quantities, maximum quantities? You're not doing the production yourself necessarily anymore, or are you? We are. Okay. Yeah, we are. I do have a staff of four and a half because my daughter is technically on staff with me as well, even though she doesn't work for me anymore. Yeah. (laughs) But yes, I do have an entire production area and my manager, he does amazing, amazing job with putting everything together. Refresh my memory on what your questions were. Yeah, the other one was maybe just to give someone an example of what, you know, a teacher might have in a classroom, what it might say, what might the verbiage be, and then Uh, minimum quantities, maximum quantities kinds of things. Okay, so for teachers... They're used as teacher incentives, teacher reward, and that the ones that sell the most are the ones that the teachers can customize themselves on the fly. And those come in quantities of 20. So it's 20 cards and then 20 separate stickers that come in it. And we've got lots of different designs. The most popular design right now we have right now, it's called a zigzag design and it comes in seven different colors. The variety pack of all seven of of those is the number one seller. And the teacher, if in in a week's time frame, they want to give away who the line leader is that day, they can write line leader on that card, cover it up with that self-stick sticker. And then when it's time, she hands them out to the kids. Oftentimes it's for treasure box rewards or extra recess time, you know, things like that. But it's customizable to what's perfect for their class and what their teaching style is. What do they want to enforce? You know, enforcing good behavior. I like it. No, that helps. My mind kind of went there, but you know, I I wanted just some clarity for myself selfishly, the listeners. I wasn't thinking of you when I asked that question. That was yes. that was pure so <laughs> that bad. was purely for me. So I heard you say in these instances, 20 is a minimum order. What's the biggest order you've ever done, Karen? Just you whiz. We there is a, a very big company in the mall. We probably can't say their name, but last year we did a hundred and forty-five thousand card order That's for amazing. this company and we sent them we we bundled them and packaged them into 600 different packages and then sent them to their franchises for them that's- that's amazing. Holy cow. Fantastic. So that is the the number, that's the biggest one that we've ever had. The date. There's a um, bigger one coming. A bigger one's coming. I'm just declaring oh, it. Absolutely. For you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know that. So one of the things also that I do want to kind of emphasize is because nobody else was doing this 14 years ago when I started it, the small and medium-sized business has definitely become my niche. There's other scratch off printers out there that do this, but they're the million plus cards and they do not want the small to medium sized business, you know, business for this. It's not worth it for them. They have a staff of 300, you know, so they need the larger quantity orders. And, you know, that's one of the things that I was hearing early on when I started this is you know, they don't want, they don't want to do the 500 card orders. They don't want to do the thousand card orders for the theater that's owned by us, you know, a, a mom and pop shop. Right. They don't want to do that for a little clothing shop that's on main street, you know, who needs to do something fun and interactive to get people in their store and give them a, prom- a promotion or a discount or something like that. That's where we've succeeded is that we've made it affordable and we've made it. So a hundred cards is our minimum when it comes to the custom cards. So you, when you did that research, you just found the niche right there. I mean, you saw other companies doing stuff, but you're like, oh, you're up here. I'll take all this for you. And and still, I mean, obviously you have great job security. And remind me, this little side thing, if I remember correctly, and tell me if I'm wrong, Karen, because we went out and saw your business. And I remember walking in and seeing this beast of a machine that was doing the printing didn't that printer do something different and you guys figured out how to repurpose it for what you needed? Was that correct? So in association with the, the machinery, we now have two 
and we name all of our machines. The one that you got to meet, his name is Stan. And we do have another younger version who we now, we call him Oliver. And Stan is the one who actually puts the scratch off finish on the completed card after the card's been printed. So that's what finalizes the, the machine or finalizes the cards. Ah, Stan's the old man and Oliver's the stud. Yeah, I like it. That's funny. <laughs> I was trying to quickly think you could have called one Keith, uh, Keith Richards old and then come up with a, someone known. For a young one, Chris Stan Evans. Stan and Oliver works for sure. Should have been like Chris Evans, Karen. Or, mm-hmm. All right, settle down, <laughs> settle down. So Karen, this is really fun. A little bit, maybe still just kind of going through. So you found a niche, you saw a niche, you you began inquiring on it, you developed knowledge and skills around it, you expanded, you've got a team around you, you had to figure out the structure of your company, payroll, I assume you have probably some insurance, there's a lot of overhead and things that go into this. So yes. did you have any knowledge it you know from an entrepreneurial standpoint on all the different things you were going to have to pull together i know it's happened over time now from where you began to where you are today but maybe share what was a really big learn for you for those that may be thinking about something like this not scratch offs but a, an opportunity for themselves yeah so in in associate with the structure of the business obviously i started as a sole proprietor in 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 2008 in 2010, once I realized that this was profitable, you know, I definitely had a good amount of sales and was getting to the point where I'm like, I have to be worried about taxes and all of that kind of stuff. So in 2010, I formally registered the company name and did all of that. One thing that I will, t- will say that I do regret is I didn't hire an accountant to do things for me in 2000, until 2012. So I had been running a business kind of by myself with a spreadsheet Mm. for many years before I realized, okay, I really need to have somebody help me with this. And I came across the accountant that I still, to this day, I still use the same accountant. He's a neighbor of mine. His parents live behind me and I'm friends with his wife. It's, 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 it's a good relationship, but I didn't come across him until I'd hired a payroll company because I'm like, I tried to figure out that whole payroll stuff and I'm like, I'm just not doing it. So I hired a payroll company. And then once I had the conversation with Deanna, who was my rep at that point in time, she's like, oh, I got the perfect guy for you for an accountant. So he's helped me structure the the business as well. So obviously started out as sole proprietor, went to LLC, and then we restructured as an S corporation, I believe in the last five years. Yeah, really good. I think that's that's really helpful just for people to hear. I think sometimes they think they have to come right out of the gate as an LLC. And, and maybe that's okay if they're ready to do that. But there is nothing wrong with a DBA doing business as, yep. moving into sole proprietor, everything you just described, Karen. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's fantastic. How you, you made the comment about like, I mean, it seems to me that you financially progressed kind of quickly. Like how long was it from when like you did a self-investment to where you're like, okay, I've made my money back. I am actually bringing in income, you know, like where you could breathe. Like how long did that take? What did that look like for you? It was probably until I hired my first employee and I I hired my first employee in 2012. Until then I was completely reinvesting everything that we had made back into the company. At that point in time, you know, I was married to a military man. We had a military man, we had stable income. So we weren't depending on me to bring in the money. That was just like reinvesting in the company over and over and over self, you know, self-financing everything. Once I hired my first employee and things just kept progressing, that's when I started paying myself just a little bit every month to just kind of see where we were at with paying out an employee. None of those other big expenses had come, the commercial building, the insurance, like none of that had really come into play yet. So I was trying to figure out how much can I pay myself, still be able to buy whatever I need to replenish and still pay an employee. So once that started to just slowly go up, we just started making other decisions at that point in time. That's fantastic. How, you have four employees now? 
correct. And how, how long from the first to the fourth, like over what time span did you hire them? My office manager, Elizabeth has been with me for five and a half years. The next longest employee is Tori, who is my graphic designer. And she's been with me for four and a half years. And then Paul, my production manager, he's been with me for just a year. He just hit a year last week. So you're just hitting the point now where the team's coming in and, and you're, you're doing that next step for growth. Yep. That's busy. Yeah, I think that was my question, Karen. So yeah, I'm a solopreneur. I mean, I've got several different things that I do, but I have a company and I'm the primary face of that company. I am all things actually in that company, unless I need to 1099 others to come in and, and help with mm-hmm. something. But are you now at a place where others are really running it? You're not in it day to day. You're more on it, still finding and creating those future opportunities, or do you still play an integral part in your day to day? I'm still an integral part in the day to day. And I think that's because I love it. Elizabeth is absolutely quite capable of doing everything, but I still do a lot of the, obviously the financial side of things. That's become one of the things that I enjoy being a part of. And I'm one of those that stays on top of my financials. I know a lot, a lot of entrepreneurs do not, you know, they wait until tax time. And then here's the, (laughs) the, the box full of stuff to your accountant. (laughs) Yeah. I don't just, I don't give them a box. I have to square it away, but I, I, I do, you know, yeah, I could, I could definitely be a little more on the front end of it. I actually, so the running joke is I hired Brian, my husband to, to do my QuickBooks because I'm like, I'm doing two, I'm in 20 directions, right? And it's like, I never can get to exactly what I want. So he's over here retired doing his teaching. He does online teaching with you know, like two classes, which is not full time. You know, he's not taking up his whole day. I'm like, okay, I need you to do this. From the moment he agreed to it, he has not touched that damn thing. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, he's like, I know with the kids and the this and the that. And I'm like, dude, I'm bringing you on board to do this. Yeah. So I was so laughing. I just told him like, we need to sit down because we have literally a box that I need to go through. (laughs) So it's hard to find good help. God dang it. Even in my own house. (laughs) That might've been your clue to do it. Right. So, and I'm laughing because our account and CPA is actually our neighbor also that does our our taxes, right? Does all our taxes every year have their own business and they're getting ready to retire. They've sold their business. They stayed on board with them for two years and then they're going to leave. And this is their last year. So I'm all like, oh, I might hire them to do my books and see if they want it just a little part-time small because it would be nothing for them. So I'm like, so when you said that, I kind of smiled. You're going to hear from every podcast listener right now who's an accountant or bookkeeper. They're all they're all coming for you. Right. So. And my husband, I'm going to fire him. So he's, <laughs> he's going to hear this. He's work. probably like wanting. For yeah. Well, right. You know, Brian, yeah. he doesn't say much. His actions speak. Right. So I'm like, dude. <laughs> So Karen, uh, I asked you, you know, earlier, what, what's something, what was a big learn? I mean, now what would maybe be not necessarily from a learn aspect, what's the best advice you would have for anyone, you know, again, our target audience is veterans, but anyone listening to this best advice, you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, what would you say to them? If you're a veteran, I would I would make sure that you tap into those resources that could be available through the VA because the VA has expanded their resources exponentially since, you know, I got out in 2001. And there's a lot even geared towards small businesses. Start also, like, don't do it by yourself. Hire a coach or somebody to assist you with, you know, that checklist of things that you really should invest your time and effort into whether it's research, whether it's the, whatever you have to do for the business, what you have to do for the state. You do have to figure out also if you're, if you're selling a product in your e-commerce, I had a big headache come up within just the last five years with, which is the state to state e-commerce sales tax nexus issues. I could go on for days about everything that I've learned with all of that. But if you are selling a product across state lines, you need to be aware what causes sales tax nexus that, and I'm just going to emphasize that no, 
figure out your, your right resources, figure out the people who can help you with doing that. If you're going through platforms like Amazon and Walmart at all, make sure that you, you know people who know that, who know the Amazon and the, the Walmart world and can give you the right advice of how to launch. That's interesting. It's funny you say that because, you know, the book, my last book, well, my two books are on my website. If people want to buy and want to sign copy, they can buy through my website. And that's one of the things that my website developer immediately picked up on. She's like, you need to, they, however it's set up, she did all the, the smart work behind the scenes. So if somebody from Tennessee buys it, it immediately puts their taxes on it. And if somebody buys it from wherever, you know, they put their taxes on it. So it's interesting you say that it's something that, you know, that I wouldn't have even thought of that, right? I live in Texas. We don't pay taxes on certain products and certain things we do. But um, yeah, it's like those little things that you learn along the way that you you really and you just got to take a breath and take one thing at a time. And and if you're catching them and fixing them, it's all good. It's not like you get something wrong you're going to jail immediately you know it's not anything like that it's just see it okay I got to readjust and you know move on so here's my question because one of our podcasts was about franchises would you ever consider franchising your business I do not feel that I am short footprinted enough to be franchised in that we're nationwide, we're really global. Yeah. There there would be a lot of there'd have to be a lot of interest in the local market. And yeah. while I have done like BNI networking organizations and those types of things in the past, ah, you're a BNI member. I was doing BNI to do local networking and did some other stuff locally through the chamber and, and that kind of stuff. And while that was definitely great for business, it was more on a professional development side for me, professional growth than it was for the the sales portion of it. And I think we're just, we're so nationwide and we're obviously in Canada and other parts of the, the country or other parts of the world that the small local footprint is not really what I'm after. And it's, it's hard for me to, to be able to see this as a franchise in a small market. I, I know we've been successful because we're nationwide. Yeah. And I can see that too, because you'd have to have in my head, if you were going to do it, you'd have to have a brick and mortar that somebody would come in and they would make their stuff and then you'd print it and then they'd get it. And it's like, you can just do that online. Like why? Right. That's just a lot of overhead for for what you'd need. So yeah, I mean, that totally makes sense. So yeah, so you've got a website presence, people can find you while they're out there surfing. What other kinds of ways do you market? Uh, Karen, what are, what are other opportunities that you have found to be fruitful for you? Google ads, believe it or not, is very good for us. Because we're so niche, we are very targeted with all of our Google ads with us being on Amazon and with us being on Walmart. We heavily invest into their advertising platforms as well. So we invest there and social media. We've gone through, you know, hills and valleys with our social media. And we are finding that when we are not as active on social media, everything just kind of flattens out a little bit and or decreases. So the impact of social media, and I'm talking about all of them, that's your TikTok, your Pinterest, your Facebook, Twitter, all of them. And you have to be consistent with that. And the more consistent you are, the better your brand awareness is and the the better footprint that you have kind of wherever wherever you're trying to market yourself. So I see you on LinkedIn. Like I'll matter of fact, I was just pulling up something and you're, you know, it comes up for whatever reason, you always show up first on my LinkedIn, which is funny. But which one do you find more fruitious? Because what's funny is like, I have more followers on Twitter than I do Instagram, and I have more interaction on Instagram than I do Twitter. We've found that the impressions are better on Instagram and on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of followers on Twitter, but no engagement, like whatsoever. Yeah, I I find there 
that I get very, very little engagement on Instagram. I found I've met tons of people that we because every I don't know why I started this, but I've always done it. If somebody follows me, I just put thanks for the follow. And it never really occurred to me that that little act actually stimulates conversation. And I have literally met people. I just did a volunteer thing. And one of the guys that I brought up there was somebody that I met on Instagram and just happened to be local. And we have more conversation through just saying that. It's it's just interesting. And I do the same thing on Twitter and I get nothing. And Facebook is spotty. I have very dedicated followers on that, but nothing. And then LinkedIn is just all over the place for me. I don't really understand a single algorithm. <laughs> yeah. And when it comes to LinkedIn, my, my marketing kind of the plans, because sometimes I'll market something on the other social media platforms that never makes it onto LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is definitely its own entity yeah. in itself when with some of your marketing and social media efforts. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I, uh, I don't know why this weighed on me. You might already have this, but I think if, since it was weighed on my spirit, I'm supposed to share it with you. I, I thought it'd be really cool to have a scratch off that a grandmother or grandfather scratches off and finds out they're going to be a grandmother or grandfather for the first time. You already have stuff like that? We do. We have <laughs> lotto replicas. Yeah. And it's a fake scratch off. Yeah. It's a fake like state lottery ticket. It yeah. looks I've and feels the- just like the real thing. And it's blank in like the prize box. Oh, yeah. So there's there's six ways to scratch off. And then, of course, the sixth one is a winning line. And then you have to scratch off the prize box. And it's completely custom. So the, the people can write in there, you're going to be a grandpa. You're going to be a grandma. I love that. Or whatever. It's, it's a boy. It's a girl. So, yeah. That's fantastic. That's a very popular product of ours. Oh, yeah. I assumed you had it. I just, I think that's a really, really neat thing. You know, somebody there filming as they scratch it and then they uncover that. I bought one of those novelty scratch-offs before and and had to apologize to my sister, you know, because she thought she really won $10,000. And I had to say, I'm sorry. It was just a joke. And <laughs> What a horrible, horrible thing. I'm just saying right now. I think they're safer too than <laughs> how they do gender reveals. Yeah. <laughs> the scratch offs are a heck of a lot safer than the cannon or the whatever. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We won't even go there. Any last thoughts, Karen? Just, man, really neat having you on, hearing what you're doing. I was unfamiliar. I've already pulled your website up. I intend to, I think, enter in, enter at, in, uh, engage you in a conversation around some things I'd like to use in my business. So I knew he excited. would too. Yeah. Like I knew this was going to happen. So it's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah. And we friend, we send free samples for businesses and, you know, others that are looking for a way to incorporate this into their business, their classroom, their parenting style, whatever it is, they can always hit us up on the website and click on the contact us submit everything and an Elizabeth will ask them more questions so that we awesome. send a targeted sample packet. Yeah, I love it. I've, I know a lot of educators in my life, you know, but I hear you saying the it's wide open, you know, anyone can benefit oh, yeah. from this from a business perspective. I'm excited. I've already got some ideas percolating in my head. So and on that exact note, that's another way in how this business expanded because we would have customers, you know, contact us saying, can you do this for me? And we're like, oh, you know, this is a great idea and we can do that and here, 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 and here. So oftentimes those custom requests, that's what has really, you know, helped us blow the business up. That's fantastic, Karen. I love it. Well, Donna, what else? What else for you? I've really enjoyed here. I was, I was naive, you know, I well, mean, here's, we always this are. is cool. Yeah. You we, are until you're not. Right? Yeah. So. We, I, I said, I followed, I mean, I've known Karen for over 20 years, but I have always followed and I've wanted to do it. I, I really have Carrie, but I've not like, I haven't found or like typical mom. Dang it. I should have done that. You know, like I'll forget after the fact, but, but it's percolating because my business, as it gets going, I'm like, there's going to be a place for it. Like I know there will. So it'll, it'll pop up. And I knew you would get going on this as yeah. soon as you heard it. We're in, we're in different, like we're on a board together and we're in different committees together. And so it's a, it's a good opportunity, like for something fun to do something fun like that. So yeah. it's really good. So 
I, you know, I don't have anything else except that I want people to understand that anybody has what it takes. I mean, they really do. And Karen, I think you'd agree. And, and I just saw this quote in Richard Branson. I, I think highly of him. I think he's a, a great leader in that world of startup. And he obviously thinks very, very, very big, but he says, if somebody offers you an amazing opportunity, but not you, you're not sure if you can do it, say yes, and then learn how to later. And that's not, I don't take that as go just being blind, but you learn along the way, right, Karen? So if you look at what you're doing now, compared to where you started and the knowledge that you have on labels and scratch offs and all that, I mean, 14 years worth of knowledge. I mean, it's insane, right? You stop, take a breath and you look back. That's, that's definitely something to pat yourself in the back on. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for that. But I'm still learning. Like there's still right. a lot of, you know, that a bigger picture thing that I'm not very good at that, you know, I'm, I'm good at the management and portion down. It's that vision portion that I'm having a harder time with. And that's yeah. when you need to know your limits and you need to know when you need to reach out for help. Fantastic yeah. advice. Yeah. yeah. Lis listening to that quote you shared, Don, it made me think, I say to people all the time, quit asking, can I, and start asking, how can I, yeah. right? One is almost asking permission and whose permission do you need to lead your life? And the other is seeking solutions, right? Inviting solutions into your mind, giving you an opportunity to act upon them. So yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan. Just be curious. I mean, that's yeah. really what it all comes down to. Be curious, be open-minded, and be willing to learn. So I tell the kids all the time, I'm like, hey, this is just learning. You guys, all you're doing, and whatever you're doing, you're just learning. And yeah. you're going to get better and better at it. So. And not all learning's easy, right? No. <laughs> I've, no, I've got some bumps painful. and bruises still from some learns, but yes. I'm thankful for them. Yeah, I I can tweak my eyes a couple times and go, ooh, yeah, that was kind of <laughs> kind of rough. That didn't go so well. But but compared to when you have the successes, I've said this in all the other podcast contracts, right? So the startup I'm doing, there's a lot of contracts with it. I hate it. That's all Jay heard out of me for six months was he's like, how's it going? I'm like, oh my God, I hate, I hate contracts. And when I got done, my editor says to me, Donna, look back. She's like my cheerleader. She's like, look back six months. And I'm like, yeah, and it's done. I'll have to tweak it here and there, but that's nothing compared to getting eight pages of verbiage down that I just wanted to hang myself every time I opened it up. But we yeah. did it, right? And and we put out a good product and it's a really good, you know, I'm proud of myself. So, all right. I got nothing else. No, nothing. It was okay. a fun hour. It went fast. I love everything that Karen shared. We're going to put, as we always do, all of Karen's contact information and the notes to the podcast. We encourage you to reach out to her, her team. This is a great opportunity. You've already heard me say I'm going to jump in on it. Karen, thanks for, for uh, spending the time with us today. Thank you for the invite. It was great to meet you, Jay. And it was great to see you again, Donna. Awesome. All right. So for everybody out there, as we always say, we really want you guys to engage, ask questions. This is all for you guys. I just want everybody to know that we fall under a, a network of called Coming Home Well. And from top to bottom, from our executive director down, we are all volunteer. We all do this because we want to. We want to share with our veterans. We are we are veteran focused, but we are not veteran exclusive. So a lot of this information can apply to everybody. So really from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for engaging. Thank you so much for, for listening and please share with your friends if you find value in this. And from all of us, thank you. Have a great week. Talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Frontline, a podcast of Coming Home Well. Join us every other Wednesday. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. Follow us on Instagram at comminghomewell underscore BTS or on Twitter at comminghomewell. Thanks again. And until all are home and all are well.